London was founded nearly 2,000 years ago by the Romans. Now tall skyscrapers soar above the site where the Roman Forum was once located in central London. Along the River Thames, mudlarks still find historical artifacts dropped or discarded by London's inhabitants over the past 2,000 years. Today, Flory Evans joins me on a mudlarking adventure, searching for these clues to our ancient past. Since she was a child, Flory has been searching the exposed riverbed at low tide and has discovered some incredible artifacts. Today, we find some interesting objects too. So I've just spotted the all-important bead of the day, hopefully the first of a few. And um, it looks to me like it might be moonstone or opalite glass. Jason, you've done it again. You've spotted a beauty. Look at that watch winder. It's got a ship on it. Whoa, really? No yes. way. Yes. Let's look at the back. Look, oh, there it's been folded over. Ooh, I, I think there's. I can bend it back. Yeah, I bet you can. I think that's got some um, bugles or horns or something crossed on it. Oh, wow. Look at that little ship, a maritime wow. watchwinder, Georgian. Wow. I've just, just spotted a cufflink from behind, and um, I mean, it's really not in great shape, but that is a profile bust of Queen Anne there. Wow, really? Yeah, and hopefully, hopefully that will show up with a bit of gentle Ooh. clean. After a few hours of mudlarking, Flory and I found a wide selection of different artifacts from bits of metalwork to pottery sherds. We did okay, didn't we, Jason? There's your star find of the day, this beautiful Georgian naval pocket watch winder with the ship on it. I mean, wow. Um, then my little Queen Anne cuff link, which hopefully will clean up and show a bit more detail. Um, under here is my little opal bead, so tiny. So this is your ubiquitous Thames feast. There's a bit of mocha wear, some um, metropolitan slip wear, Victorian transfer wear, um, Chinese export porcelain, Scottish sponge wear, some Tudor green wear, a bit of the base of a bellamine here. Um, and some nice little bits of Victorian bottles as well. That would have been an apothecary bottle. That's probably off a, off a cod or actually a skittle maybe. Not only is Floria a passionate mudlark, she is the director of an art gallery near Piccadilly Circus in the heart of central London. Flory kindly invited me to visit the Weiss Gallery in German Street to show me some of the incredible 16th and 17th century paintings and armory which are currently on display. It was a real treat to have a private tour of this prestigious gallery in Piccadilly. Hello, Jason, welcome to the Weiss Gallery. This is the Vice Gallery and we are specialist dealers in historical portraits, mainly from the 16th and 17th centuries. And I have been director here for 10 years now. And for the most part, we love Tudor and Jacobean portraits, but also Northern European examples as well. So Jason, have a seat. Uh, thanks so much for having me. This is incredible, just kind of looking at all these amazing paintings you have around here. Well, it's a pleasure to share them with you and thank you for coming in the evening as well because I think they look most grand in Absolutely. twilight, lit like this. You can imagine them by candlelight in a grand hall when they were first hung by their original owners. So we're here tonight to talk about mudlarking. Yes. And how did you first hear about mudlarking? That is an impossible question, Jason. Okay. I grew up near the river. 
Uh, the River Thames? The River Thames. Okay. And as so you're a Londoner from London, I'm, born and bred? Yes, I'm a Londoner born and bred with an Australian mum who okay. grew up, she grew up in Sydney and um, missed the sea. And she said to my dad, I have to live near water. So hence, um, they do still live um, in Southwest London by the Thames. Amazing. So I was always out on the foreshore as a child, picking up bits. I didn't know it was called mudlarking, but it somehow must have at some point entered my consciousness. Then when I had my daughter, um, and towards the end of my pregnancy, I was going for long walks by the river. I was quite uncomfortable, but I found that walking really helped. Um, I was sort of bending down in a slightly ungainly way, obviously being very pregnant, mm -hmm. um, but enjoying my larking then and on my maternity leave with her as well. I'd have her in a sling and she would sleep really? in a papoose. Yes, as a small yes, baby. A a small baby. She loved it, you know, the sound of the waves, she would sleep and I would mudlark and it was magical. So and she's still your mudlarking companion to the Yes, story, she huh? is indeed, yeah. yes. And still a willing companion. I don't know when that will change, but um, yeah. So I think probably um, it really blossomed with my daughter. Yeah. yeah. And how old is she now? She's six now. Okay. She's Amazing. seven in January. So. And she's found so many incredible finds. She's, yeah. Are you yeah. going to show us in a little bit? Yeah. But, she, uh, she has a better eye than me, as you know. I mean, she's... I think because kids are much lower to the ground. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And therefore they can pick out things much easier. Yeah. Whereas we have to stoop way over and with our old eyes yeah. have to squint and hope to find some things. I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. While I was at the Vice Gallery, Flory showed me some of her mudlarking finds from the River Thames, which have connections to the incredible historic paintings on display. I'd like to show you this portrait of Edward VI, who was the son of Henry VIII, the only legitimate son by Jane Seymour, his much longed for male heir. Um, this was painted by a Flemish artist called Guillaume Scrotz, who was actually appointed as painter to the king um, by Henry VIII, pretty much just before he died. So he chose him really to become the artist who would produce his son's image, really the propaganda of the day um, to promulgate Edward's image across um, the globe. Um, why I love this picture? Because I found a button very recently on the foreshore, which um, Jason will do a lovely close up for you, um, which has Edward VI on it. And when I found it um, and picked it up, I assumed it was a Tudor lady, but when I sat down with it on a rock, um, on the foreshore and looked closely, I suddenly realized I recognized the portrait as being this very image that we have in the gallery of Edward VI, aged nine years old, when he had just been crowned um, King of England after his dad's death. So this rather formidable and not particularly attractive woman, uh, Margaret Wootton, was the godmother of Queen Elizabeth I. And she was a very wealthy woman in her own right. And in this portrait, which is after an original by Hans Holbein, um, you can see she is wearing a lot of rings. She's double ringing it as well on some fingers. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to do the same with some of my Thames rings in juxtaposition and to show you her hand and my hand and a very similar floral ring as well, which we can do close-ups of. So I would say that this ring is Tudor period along with the painting. And you can see that she has got two floral rings really similar to mine. I should probably add that where hers are emeralds, no doubt set in gold, mine is glass paste set in brass. But I mean, the style is, is pitch perfect, isn't it, Jason? Absolutely. After the fascinating tour of the gallery, Flory showed me some of her favorite mudlarking finds from the River Thames, 
ranging from the Roman period to modern times. Number one, undoubtedly my beads. Now, these range from Roman at this end, these lovely turquoise ones, um, through the ages to the 18th century um, with trade beads. In fact, some of the trade beads would be Renaissance um, as well. And in fact, that bead, this Renaissance bead, this Venetian Millefiori bead is the one that started me off on my bead hunting mission in the Thames. Um, when I found this, it was particularly poignant, um, not only because it's a beautiful piece and it's amazingly crafted, but the fact that it has such a sad story um, that beads were traded for lives um, in Africa is extraordinary. Um, so I think that the story behind these beads is extraordinary. Um, so yeah, my beads. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, Jason. Um, this is an Edwardian diamond um, wedding ring, engagement ring, really, um, set in platinum and uh, a very high carat gold. Is that 22? I'm never sure. Um, 24, 24 carat. Um, anyway, uh, this has particular resonance because I have lived with my boyfriend many years and we have a child together but we're not married so I had to go and find my own engagement ring. There it is. Number three uh, has to be a pewter hawking whistle with the profile of a little horse on it and I love the fact that this is an oral connection with the past. Can I blow it for you? piercing. Um, it's 18th century, I should add. Because I am really into historical costume, this, which is a bodkin, which is a type of uh, needle for threading your bodice, if you can imagine, your corset, um, the ribbon would go through here. And this is probably from uh, the Tudor period, uh, 1560s. While we're on the Tudors, I love them, and I have a small and um, very beloved collection of Tudor dress hooks, which um, are not actually that common to find, are they, Jason, by the Thames? I mean, I've got partial ones. Um, only one is absolutely complete. And I would show you my very gorgeous Chatelaine hook, um, which I found this year. Um, but sadly, that's being recorded with Museum of London. But I love these. They connect me with Tudor women. The next find, I'm cheating slightly because my daughter found it, but because she is my treasure, this is my treasure too. And it's a ginormous garnet. Many of you know the mystery of the Thames garnets. They usually come in a very tiny size and uh, this is an absolute monster. And she found it when she was three or just about to turn three. I mean, my God, when she picked it up, I thought she was picking up a flint. And then I realized it was actually a garnet. I'm not really that enthusiastic about coins, um, but I have got a very gorgeous silver bank token from, I'm gonna get the date right, 1811, with um, a rather wonderfully portly George III on the front, and the condition is just mint. That coin makes me happy, and the fact that it's a bank token rather than a standard coin as well makes it a bit more special. Um, these are my favourite 18th century finds. It's this gorgeous little um, purse um, clasp. It's actually, I suppose it is a clasp, but I just, I just find it exquisite. And um, this rather large, as you pointed out to me earlier, um, watch winder, which you can imagine being used by somebody rather dandy. And I love that it still swivels. And again, it has lovely detail on it. 
If you would like to see and read more about Flory's incredible bead collection, check out the book called Thames Mudlarking, Searching for London's Lost Treasures. The book features hundreds of the best artifacts ever found in the River Thames by over 50 mudlarks. It is available online in all good bookstores.